Are you an ugly lighthouse? <laughs> you know, I think we humans are all, to one degree or another, ugly lighthouses. And I've been around lighthouses my whole life. My family owned a boat while I was growing up, and I loved to be on the water and fish and typically vacation near water. Um, I've seen a whole bunch of lighthouses in my life, and some of them are really beautiful and very stately, and frankly, some of them are kind of run down and rusty and, and pretty ugly. Uh, but here's what I've never heard. I've never heard a sailor complain that a lighthouse didn't look good. Because I'll tell you what, when you're lost on the sea, when it's dark or you're in a fog and you don't know where you are, and, and you see that light coming through the darkness, and all of a sudden you know your bearings and you know you're safe and you know what to do, you are so thankful for that light. <laughs> it doesn't matter what the lighthouse looks like because what's important is the light that shines from it. And we need to take that as a good lesson because you and I are the lights of the world. When we talk about Christ to others, when we live godly lives, we shine the light of God out to the world. And what the devil wants us to do is the devil wants us to worry about what kind of lighthouse we look like. You know, are, are we physically beautiful? Are we healthy? Are we financially well off? Do we, are we with the right people? Do we drive the right kind of car? You know, that kind of thing doesn't shine into the darkness. Nobody gets saved because you have a nice car, or nice clothes, or you look physically nice. You know, people get saved through the power of Jesus Christ. And we can spend a whole lot of effort. <laughs> we can misspend a whole lot of effort trying to make our lives beautiful or complete because somehow we get misguided into thinking that the way we present ourselves is really the light. When, when the light shines from our face and out of our eyes and it's the joy that we have on the inside and it's the light of the knowledge of Christ that we have a hope that burns within us, a hope of having a new body, a hope of living in a wonderful place, absolutely. You know, we, we do have the, this, this, um, this light of Christ in an earthen vessel in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, starting in verse 6. Uh, the scripture tells us, because it is God who said light will shine out of darkness, who has shined in our hearts. Sure, we started getting the light from somewhere else to provide illumination by way of the knowledge of the glory of God, which is on the face of Jesus Christ. See, that the knowledge that we have that produces that joy that we have, boy, that, that's really going to be then shining out to people. In verse 7, well, just, right after saying, you know, wow, we, we have this illumination by way of the knowledge of the glory of God. And the very next verse says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Yeah, you know, like gray hair and, and just your body gets older or, you know, there's things that are wrong or... Uh, we, we have this treasure in an earthen vessels. And there's a lot of times that we humans are ugly lighthouses. And, and trying to make the lighthouse beauty is beautiful, is missing the point. He says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Why? Does God know that? Oh, God's surprised. Wow, here's God. I sure am surprised that I put the treasure in earthen vessels. No, God chose us. God knows where the treasure is. We need to know what the treasure is. And the treasure is the light of Christ that shines from us and not that we're so beautiful. He says, but we have this treasure in earth and vessels so that the exceeding greatness of the power will be from God and not from ourselves. Absolutely, it isn't this great impression that I make. It's the light of my eyes, the look on my face, the joy in my voice. That's the great impression. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Uh, how's it go with our lives? <laughs> well, the next verse, <laughs> verse 8. Well, for us, we're pressed on every side, yet not crushed, perplexed, yet not driven to despair, persecuted, yet not forsaken, struck down, yet not destroyed. Gee, a lot of problems. Doesn't stop the light from shining. He says always carrying about in our body the putting to death of Jesus so that the life also of Jesus 
may be made visible in our body, and that's what we want to do. We want to take this light of Jesus Christ and make it visible in our body. And we're not going to do it by making our body so great. We mess up all the time. I mean, here's, here's the Apostle Paul, and he's writing in Romans about uh, how he just can't seem to get his life together. Sounds like me a lot of the times. Here we go. Romans chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, having been sold as a slave to sin. Who sold me? Adam. Thank you, Adam. Verse 15. For I don't understand my own actions writes the Apostle Paul. For I'm not practicing what I want, but I'm doing the very thing I hate. So, you know, it, the Apostle Paul probably didn't need to exercise, but if he belonged to a gym, he'd probably be writing this and saying, I just don't get to the gym as often as I should, or whatever it would happen to be. Verse 18, For I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my flesh. For the desire to do good is present with me, but acting out that good is not. For I do not do the good I want, but what I do not want, <laughs> that evil, I practice. So what's the Apostle Paul say? Look, I'm trying to get my life together and it just doesn't work. Later on in Romans 7, he's going to say, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, because Jesus Christ will deliver us from this wretched body. But in the meantime, how hard would you have to work to get your body in perfect shape, to get your circumstances in perfect shape? How hard would you have to work? Here's Apostle, Apostle Paul, I don't understand my own actions, I'm not practicing what I want. How hard would you have to work to do everything you wanted to do all the time, every single good practice? Read, go to fellowship, pray, witness to other people, help other people, show up, join charities. Yeah, how hard would, you know, it can't be done. We can spend so much time trying to make our lighthouse pretty that we actually forget to shine the light of Christ out to others. If on the other hand, we look at Christ and focus on Christ and really get his love for us, how much Christ loved us, how much God loves us, and how much we have in the way of hope for the future, then we can sit there and we can relax and we can shine, and all of a sudden we're shining, and it's like, what happened? I quit focusing on the, the lighthouse, and I started thinking about the, the source of the light God threw me out to the world, absolutely. In 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul was having trouble so in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he says, There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of the adversary, to beat up on me, so that I would not be overly exalted. <laughs> I think, I speak to a lot of people who feel this way about the world. The world is beating up on me. Yeah, that's the, what the world does. It beats up on people. Uh, Apostle Paul, of course, didn't like it any more than we do. <laughs> and so he said, three times I pleaded, pleaded with the Lord about this so that it would depart from me. Three times he went to the Lord Jesus Christ and said, you know, can you get this thing off my back? Um, verse 9, and he, the Lord, said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. See, if we have the grace of God in our life, if we have the grace of Christ in our life, and then we can smile and we can relax and we can shine that light. And that's what Jesus said. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power reaches its fulfillment in weakness. Paul writes, therefore, I will most gladly boast all the more in my weaknesses so that the power of Christ will rest on me. Therefore, in behalf of Christ, I'm content in weaknesses, in being mistreated, in hardships and persecutions and difficulties. Boy, listen to that. What a powerful statement from the Apostle Paul. I am content in weaknesses, in being mistreated, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. And why does he say that? He says, for when I am weak, then I am powerful. Why, why is it that when, we, when our lighthouse is being particularly ugly, why are we then so powerful? Because when does Christ really show up in our life? 
You know, when you've got your whole life together and all your debts are paid and you got money in the bank and you're healthy and stuff, and Jesus comes up, it's like, yeah, well, nice to see you. Don't really need you right now. You know, but boy, when, when we're weak and when we're distressed and when we're beaten, beaten up by life, you know, and, and it, it looks like, man, we ought to be walking around with our head down and bawling our eyes out and mad and frustrated. And instead, you know, we're, we're taking it in stride in the power of Christ is being manifest in our bodies and we're shining the light of Christ out to other people, that's when our lighthouses really shine. No wonder that Hebrews says in chapter 12, verse 2, let us fix our eyes upon Jesus and let us shine the light of Christ out to the world. And Hebrews chapter 2 says, you know, fixing your eyes upon Jesus. Uh, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Absolutely. And if we, will, if we will fix our eyes on Jesus Christ, the love that he has for us, what he has done for us, then we will, we will have that great joy on the inside and we will shine the light of Christ into the world. And when we do that, it won't really matter that we're in an ugly lighthouse, that we've got problems. What's really going to bless people is, wow, Christ shines through that person. Don't worry about being an ugly lighthouse. Let the light of Christ shine forth from you. God bless you. <music>